In a previous video, I created this WordPress plugin that adds this chatbot on your website. Now, this chatbot is actually connected to the ChatGPT API, so it works just like ChatGPT. So I can ask it anything. What is the average price of a car in the United States? And it will give me the answer. As an AI language model, I do not have access to real-time information or the ability to browse the internet. However, the average price of a new car in the United States can vary based on factors such as make, model, year and location. And so on. And then it also remembers the chat history, so I can say something like How has this price changed over time? And it will tell me the answer. So it works great. But now, what I actually would like to do is I would like the chatbot to search for the answer on the WordPress website. So when a customer comes to the website, they can ask something about the pricing or the services, and then the chatbot will tell the answer. But before we do that, there's a couple of things I want to change in the CSS. Now, the first thing is that the send button is not quite centered vertically in this box. And then here in the bottom, there's a bit too much space and there's not enough space between the scroll bar and the message box. And then up here I want to round this corner and I want to add some kind of logo here where you open and close the chat. So let's do that real quick. So let's go inspect this button and it is positioned absolutely so I will just change the top to six pixels and that looks like it's centered. So I will do the same thing in my style.css, six pixels and then Let's inspect this input box text area. It does not have any margin, so the margin comes from some other field. Ah, it comes from this. So the chat messages div has a height of 100% minus 60 pixels. And then the input wrapper is right after that. So I have to add some margin to the input wrapper. So, or I can just say top 5 pixels, 10 pixels. Okay, so now that looks a lot better already. So let's do that. Top 10 pixels. And then the corner over there is not rounded, but the message boxes are rounded. So I think I can just add a border radius to the chat messages box. So border radius 30 pixels, uh, 15 pixels. How much is that? <laughs> That's, that looks about right. I think it's 10. Okay, I think 15 is better. I have to change it to the chat messages as well. So here I will add border radius 15 pixels and I will change this to 15 pixels as well. And in fact I will say font size will be 0.9 em because I think the font size is a bit too big in the chat message. So now if we refresh this page and we open the chat, now it looks better. Okay, and I will change the border radius of this as well. 215 pixels. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I want some logo here where you can toggle the chatbot. So in fact, I think we can use these dash icons. I actually don't know how to use dash icons because I only use font awesome. So let's ask ChatGPT. How do I use dash icons in WordPress? I want to add a message symbol to a chat toggle button. Open the WordPress editor. Okay, dash icons email. That's probably not what I want, but I think this should be the code that we need. So I will go to my plugin.php and I will add here this. And then I have to go to the style and I need to remove the text indent from here. And let's refresh this page. Okay, that looks almost good already. So I just need to change the size of it. So let's change here font size 1.1 em. 1.2, 1.3, no, it doesn't change. I have to do it for exactly this. Font size 1.1 em, 2.1, 2 em. Okay, so I will add that here. WP GPT toggle span font size 2 em and Position relative left minus five. And I will actually use dash icons instead of span. And refresh. Okay, that looks pretty nice. I will leave it at that. But <laughs> why does it move when I add this inspection? 
let's set it as a pixel value. 28 pixels. Not sure if that's a good idea, but at least it should work now. Okay, so now we can toggle it and it has a symbol on it. Now, it's not the most beautiful <laughs> chat window, but if you want to use this on your website, you can tweak the CSS to your liking. But now, how do we make this search the actual website? So, you can set a system message for ChatGPT. So here we can set a system message. So basically we could add here all the content of this website and then tell it to answer questions based on that. But there is a limit to how much data you can put here. So if you have a larger website, then it's not going to work. And I guess it's going to slow it down as well. So we need to find some other solution. Now here's my idea. How about we split this into multiple requests to ChatGPT? So first we would say, here is the question that the user is asking. And here is the sitemap of this website. Please tell me which page should I go to to find this information. And then it could suggest, okay, they're asking for the price, so maybe we could go to the pricing section. Then when we get the page that ChatGPT thinks that the information is on, we will take that page and then send that page content to ChatGPT and tell it to give the answer. So let's try and do that. But first, let's clean this code up a bit. So currently I have only this plugin.php file and everything is in here. I have all these functions in here. But if we continue this route, then we're going to have a bunch of functions in one file and it's going to get messy. So let's separate some of this functionality into different classes. So at least let's create a chat GPT class. So I will create a new folder here called src and in here I will create a new file called chatgpt.php and I will namespace this as unconf slash wp chat gpt and I will create a class called chat gpt and then I will move this function into that class. Okay. But now I am passing in the message and the message history and then I'm getting the OpenAI key inside this function. Now this is not the best way to do this. So I will actually make a constructor function here which will take the API key and it will actually set it directly as a property. So then we can replace this with this API key. And then it also gets the message history but I don't want to pass it every time to this function. So I will create another protected array message history. And then I will create a function add message history, which will take an array of message history. And it will set this message history into that message history. So now I can remove this from here and I can say this message history. And I will actually initialize it as an empty array. And then here I will say if he set this system message, then we will add that as a system message. And I will create it here. Protected string system message. And then we will add the message history to the messages and the new message to the messages. And I will rename this to send message. And I will also extract this into another method. I will say response equals this make API request. And it takes the messages. And I will create that here. And it will return this. Actually, I can do it like this directly. So we actually return the JSON decoded data. And this will be actually JSON. And actually, I will move this error handling there as well. So in fact, <laughs> this will be JSON equals that, and we will return that. So this will return string. So we will return that directly. And this will also return string. Okay, that is good enough for me. So then we will have this ChatGPT endpoint. So let's create that as its own class as well. Chat endpoint dot php and we will move this function in there and I will call it parse request and we will use this and we will create a constructor in which we will pass in 
the chat GPT object. And then this will be this chat GPT send message. And we don't need the message history here. We will set it this chat GPT add message history message history like this. And we need to use this as well. And then I can remove this and I will add this into that class. So when we register this, let's say in the constructor, we will do this. And I can just use an anonymous function here. So when we construct this chat endpoint, we will register the REST API. And this callback will be an array with this and parse request. So then it will call the parse request of this object. Now, perhaps this should be like a singleton because you can't really have multiple of these chat endpoints because it's hard coded the same way, but let's not go there right now. So now what I can do here is I can just say endpoint is new chat endpoint and I will use this. And this needs the chat GPT. So I have to create that as well. Chat GPT is new chat GPT. And this gets the API key. And I will set it here. API key is require openAI key.php. Now I don't really like this that I'm setting this to a variable and saying new because we don't actually have to use this anywhere. So I will actually do this. I will say chat endpoint init. And then I will make the constructor private and I will create a public function, public static function init. And this will get the chat GPT, chat GPT. And what this will do is it will say, if we don't have this instance, then this, in, sorry, I can't use this. I need to use self instance, then self instance will be new self with chat GPT. And then we will return self instance and we will create it here. Private static instance, which will be chat GPT. And maybe this should be private as well. Sorry, <laughs> this is not chat GPT, this is chat endpoint. Okay, so now we can only have one chat endpoint. And now this code looks a bit more intuitive. Now, what are we going to do with the rest of these things? What is this? This is the front end HTML. So let's create a new file. Let's call this plugin.php. And then here we will create a function render chat box. And it will just do that. It will render the chat box. And then we will create private function add actions, which will add this action, which will call this render chat box. And then I will do the same thing with this plugin because it will only be initialized once. So I will copy this and this will be a static plugin and it won't do this. It will call this add actions and I don't think I will pass anything in here or here. I will just put all of these in there. And these I will move into a function. This nq scripts and this nq styles. And I will move them here. And I don't like that this require is here. So I will do this. I will give it the string API key and I will pass it in here too. And then in the plugin, I will do this and I will say plugin init and I will use plugin. And I can actually just put this like this and I will give it the API key. Okay, so this is our plugin now. It just calls plugin init, which will be here. And init will create a new instance of a plugin if it hasn't been created already and then returns the instance. And when it's constructed, 
it adds the actions and then it initializes the chat GPT and it initializes the chat endpoint and I will just move this in line. I think that looks neat. and then I'll do this. And then it enqueues the scripts and the styles and that is it. So if I didn't make any terrible mistakes, which I probably did, then I should be able to refresh this page and it still works just the same. And it does not. So let's see what I broke. Ah, I have to autoload these things. So let's create a new file, autoload.php. And let's create the autoloader here. SPL register autoload. And function which takes the class and if string position in class of unconv slash is zero. So if we are in the unconv namespace, then we will say require ter slash src slash add the whole thing. Unconv slash wp chat gpt. Was that what I call it? Yes. So if that is the namespace and there should be a slash here too, then we will require from the source the class dot php. And we have to say class is string replace backslash with forward slash in class. So that should do it. If we refresh this page, we still get an error. So let's inspect what is the problem. Unconv WP chat GPT plugin not found. Of course, because I have to require the autoload.php and refresh. And what else do we have to do? Failed opening required um, uncon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have to remove this. So that is 19 characters minus the extra slashes. So class is substring class 70. And refresh. And we do not have <laughs> the chatbot here. Okay, we are actually adding the HTML here, but I guess we don't have the scripts. Ah, because it's trying to <laughs> load it from the source. So I have to change the path. So this is not file. This is going to be ter slash dot dot slash. And if we refresh this page, it still doesn't work. Okay, now it works. So I had to add the plugin.php. Now, I think this is not the right way of doing this. There's something simpler here. But anyway, it works. So now we have this here again. And hopefully if I say hello, it will still work. Hello, how can I assist you? Okay, so now we have done absolutely nothing so far in this video. But our code is a lot cleaner. At least I think so. Let me know in the comments. Did I waste my time or was that a worthwhile effort? So I will commit this stuff to git. All right, so now we can actually get into the thing that we were going to do. And I'm 45 minutes in to filming. So hopefully someone is still watching this video. So now what is the first thing we have to do? First, we have to implement that functionality that when we ask a question, we will then have ChatGPT tell us which page we should search that information from. So let's create a new class, which will be pagelookup.php. And this will have a public function construct. And this is going to need ChatGPT. So we will say private ChatGPT ChatGPT. And let's not have anything in the constructor yet. And then this should get a message and then pass that message along with the sitemap of the website to ChatGPT. So we will have a public function find page and we will have string question. And what will this do? First, we have to generate the sitemap. So let's say sitemap is this create sitemap. And we will make that function. Now, what will this do? Now, I think it would be good to create a sitemap in 
JSON format, because ChatGPT is very good at understanding JSON. So then if we get the response back from ChatGPT in JSON, then it's also easy to parse it. So how do we get a sitemap in WordPress? Well, let's go and ask ChatGPT. Can you create a PHP function that returns a list of WordPress page IDs and names? Okay, so there's just a get pages function which will get the ID and the post type. Okay, so let's do exactly this. So we get the pages and then we loop through the pages and we add them by key to this. Okay, but I will change the format of this into ID and name. And then I will return that and I will change this to the shorthand version. So this will create an array of the pages. So I will call it an array. And then let's say prompt is what? Here's the sitemap of our website. Please answer. Let's just do this. Here's the sitemap of our website. And then here we will add JSON encode sitemap. And then we will say please respond with the ID of the page which you think that would answer the following question. And then we add the question here, which will be question and some new lines. And this should actually be the system message, I think. So let's say something like, your job is to find a page on our website that would answer the question the user asks. Here's the sitemap of our website. And then here we will have a JSON sitemap of the website. Please respond with the ID of the page which you think that would answer the following question. Just answer the question and we don't add it here yet. So then what we will do is we will say, I actually won't pass the chat GPT in here because I want to create it here for this particular purpose. So I will say, Chat GPT is new chat GPT. I need to pass the API key in here too. Okay, we will pass it in there. But then we will say this chat GPT set system message and we will set it to the prompt. And I will actually call this system message. Okay, and I will create here a function set system message and it will take a string of system message and it will set this system message to system message. Okay. And then we will say response is this chat GPT send message. And we just sent the message now that the user gave. So it will be question. And let's just return this. So now what we can do is we can go to chat endpoint. So now when we parse the request, what we will actually do is we will say response is this page lookup find page. And then we take the message and I will just remove this. And I will have to pass in the page lookup, which will be a page lookup. And I will add it here too. Page lookup. And then I will change my plugin.php and I will add here new page lookup and it will take chat GPT. So I will use the same chat GPT. Chat GPT and I will set it here. Chat GPT is that. And then I will pass in chat GPT. Which doesn't really make sense because <laughs> if page lookup already has chat GPT then we can get it from there. But Never mind. So now we are calling init. We are creating a new instance. And then when we get a request, we get the response from the page lookup by the message. And the page lookup will send this system message and then send a message. So now if we go back here and let's refresh this. And if we ask something like, what is your address? Then it should probably say about us. <laughs> 
contact us. Okay, that's better. So <laughs> contact us is the page where we should find it. But now this is not that easy to parse. I mean, it is, but we don't know if it's going to answer this way every time. So let's say, l please respond in JSON format with the ID and name of the page you think that the ans would answer the question. For example, ID 123 and name home page. So let's see if that will help a bit. What are your latest news? Now I will start a news chat because this will be in the chat history and that might affect it. So I'll say, what are your latest news? ID 662 name news. So what is the ID of the news page? Let's pages news. It is 662 as you can see here from the URL. So now it knows what page we should look at. Okay, that's great. Then we should get the content of that page and pass it in another prompt. So let's do that. Let's create a copy of this page lookup and we will call it information lookup. <laughs> I have no idea how to name this thing. So this will be information lookup and it will say find info by the question and it will take the integer of the page ID. So then what will be the system message this time? This time it will be your job is to find an answer to the question the user has provided. Use the following information to answer the question. And then we should add something like content start and content end. And here we will put the content. If the above information does not have an answer to the question, please say that you are unable to find the information. Okay, that should be enough. And then we have to get the content of the page. So how do we get it? Um, content is uh, content, the content. No, it's not um, get content. There's no get, get the content. <laughs> How is this naming in WordPress? How do you get the... It's get the content. Okay, great. So this will return a string from the ID. More link text, strip teaser. Okay, so I will just add post page ID. Okay, that will be the content. And should I say something like strip tags or something? I guess ChatGPT can read HTML, so it's fine. But if there's a lot of like styling or something on the page. Like if you use Elementor, it's gonna look terrible. Anyway, let's do just that. And we don't need to create a sitemap. So this should now tell the answer. So let's do this. We'll go to the chat endpoint and we will say page is that. And then let's call this find page. And then page ID is JSON decode find page and let's say true so that it will be an associative array and I will just get the ID from that and then I will say um, find info is this information lookup find info and I'll pass in the message and the page ID and this will actually be the response and then I have to pass in information lookup and here as well. And here. I will actually say here just func get args. Okay, so now we find the page where we want to find the information from. And then we take the content of that page and ask ChatGPT to tell us the information. Now, there's a bit of a problem here because this is just lorem ipsum stuff here. Well, this has actually some text, but if we go here to about us, oh, we have a <laughs> critical error. Too few arguments to chat endpoint in it. We will have to pass in here the information lookup. Okay, so we don't really have any information on this page. This is just some filler stuff. Well, we have some names here. So what if we ask, what are 
the names of your employees. Sorry, there was an error. <laughs> we are getting some errors. Trying to access array offset on value type null. Okay, so we did not get an ID. There should be an ID there. Let's do this. Error log find page. Let's see what is the response. I'm sorry, I couldn't find a specific page on your, our website that lists the names of our employees. However, you can visit the contact us page to see the contact information. Okay, so this is about us, not contact us. So let's change the prompt a bit. Let's say answer in JSON format every time, even if it is not 100% certain that the information could be found on a given page. Answer with the most likely page that could contain that information. So let's try this again. What are the names of your employees? I'm sorry, but I cannot provide you with the names of the employees as the website does not mention any specific names of the employees. The website only mentions their job titles and their respective roles in the company. What? <laughs> so I think it actually found something. Let's see. Okay, it says about us. So it found about us page, but then it says, uh, I don't know if they're employees. Can you tell me? Now here's a problem. What is the chat history I'm sending? Is this gonna work? <laughs> Let's see. Can you tell me who is the developer? Because now it, it's, yes, <laughs> there's a problem. I'm sorry, but I cannot tell you who the developer of the website is, as the website does not mention any specific developer <laughs> on any of its pages. So this is, where is this coming from? Um, it is coming from here, find page. Answer in JSON format every time, <laughs> but it doesn't answer in JSON format. So how about we do this? Page ID is that or null. If page ID is null, then we will say response is the find page result directly. Otherwise, we get the information from that page. So let's try this one more time. If we say, what are the names of your employees? I'm sorry, but I cannot provide you with the names of the employees as they are not mentioned in the available information. Okay. And what did we get about us? Let's see what we are actually sending as the content. Get the content page ID. Let's just error log this system message. And let's do this again. Unfortunately, I cannot provide you with the names. Okay, so here is, <laughs> there's a lot of HTML in here. So here we have the name of an employee, but there's so much HTML here. So let's actually call strip tags on this content. And let's ask it again. Let's ask something like, is there a George on the team? Okay, so <laughs> ID61 name about us. This page may contain information about the team and its members. So this is often a problem with ChatGPT or this OpenAI API because it answers something weird sometimes. So how do we solve that issue? We could write a better prompt or we could add some parsing to the response. So page lookup. Don't add any other data to the response than JSON. Maybe that will help. Let's try one more time. Is there a George on the team? Yes, there is a George Williams on the team who is a developer. So now it actually got <laughs> the information that he's a developer and there's a George Williams. So now, what if I ask, how about a Julia? Or who is the client service representative? Then how does this work? Now, how does the chat history work? 
So we will send it to the chat endpoint, which will get these messages. Is there a George on the team? Yes, there's a George Williams. And then how about a Julia? Then yes, it, it should work. But it doesn't know what page we are on. Does it have to know that? No. So if I say, who is the client service representative? It is not specified which client service rep representative you are referring to, as, as we have no specific names mentioned on our website. However, you may find information about our client services team and their role under the About Us page with ID 61. So why didn't you answer then with About Us? Let's do something more here. Let's say, let's add this um, question dot equals answer only in JSON. And let's try this again. Is there a George on the team? Yes, there is a person named George Williams on the team who is a developer. Who is the client service representative? I'm sorry, but the given information does not provide the name of the client service representative or a list of the team members. Why not? Ha! Now it found contact us page. Okay, that's right. So now it says, okay, you will find this information on the contact us page. So now we should add some kind of loop here to say, okay, maybe it's this page. Let's look at that page. And if we can't find the information, then we ask, okay, we couldn't find the information. What is the next page we should look at? So let's change this. Let's say if the above information does not have an answer to the question, please answer only with not found. And then we can parse that. So when we are in the chat endpoint and we get the response, then we say if response is not found. And let's trim this. Or Okay, let's do this. Let's trim it. If it is not found, then we should ask for another page. In fact, I will make this a while loop and I will say response is an empty response and then in the loop we will find a page and I will say exclude is an empty array and I will pass excluded pages in to the find page method and let's add some kind of limit so that we don't have an infinite loop. So if limit is more than five then break and let's set the response to I'm sorry but I can't find that information and let's here set limit to zero and here just limit plus plus let's do just four and then we have to add here to the find page an array of exclude and actually we can pass it into the create sitemap. So then here we will also have array exclude and I will say if page ID is sorry in array if in array page ID exclude then we will just continue. Otherwise we will get otherwise we will add the page to the list. So then we are not going to look from those excluded pages anymore. So let's see what happens now. Is there a George on the team? We got an empty message right away. <laughs> Sorry, I need to set this to not found to begin with so that we will actually go into this loop. Okay, is there a George on the team? Yes, there is a George Williams on the team. Who is the client service representative? There is no information provided about the client service representative. The given information only includes a phone number, email address, office address, and contact form. Um, okay, <laughs> it shouldn't give that answer. It should say not found because we should only get this answer or the answer about the thing being found on the page. So we need to get this. So let's try again to add it to the question. Question dot equals if information is not found answer with not found and <laughs> is it gonna add these quotes in there if I let's try one more time is there a charge on the team 
Yes, there is a George on the team. Who is the client service representative? Sorry, the provided information does not mention the name of the client service representative. Therefore, the answer is not found. Okay, so I will change this to while str pos of response not found is not false. So if the response includes not found, then we go to this loop. So let's try again. Is there a George on the team? Yes, there's a George Williams on the team. Who is the client service representative? Sorry, the provided information does not contain the name or any information regarding the client service representative. Let's go back here. Your job is to find an answer to the question the user has provided. You can only answer with the code not found or the actual found information. Use the following information to answer the question. If the above information does not have an answer to the question, please, no please, <laughs> answer only with not found and nothing else. If information is not found, answer with not found. Okay, let's try this again. Is there a George on the team? Yes, there is a George Williams on the team. Who is the client service representative? I'm sorry, but I can't find that information. So let's see. That took a lot longer than the first question. So what is the content here? Okay, we are getting the same thing every time. So our exclusion doesn't work. Because I am not adding it to the excluded pages. Here I need to say exclude equals page ID. Here, actually here. If we find the page ID, then we add that to the excluded page ID. Okay, now it's gonna work, trust me. Is there a George on the team. Yes, there is a George on the team. Who is the client service representative? The client service representative is Julia Castillo. So now it works. That is amazing. But now this video is taking way too long. So I will end it here. But in the next video, what I would like to do is I would like to create content for this website with AI. And then we could test this better if it can find the information. So if you want to see that video, then hit that subscribe button and you won't miss it when I post that video. So thank you for watching today's video and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.